Welcome back to another Minecraft update video. This one is about what we can do with some of the technical updates in the most recent snapshot for Minecraft 1.14. As you can see, it has a massive, massive change list and it was split into two sections with this second part right here, technical changes in 18W43A. I didn't even get to cover this in the snapshot video I made earlier in the week. If you didn't catch that, there'll be a link on the screen and I actually missed a couple of things in that video. So before we get into some of these technical changes, let's quickly go over the things that I missed. The Illager Beast has an ability that I missed. It will instantly break leave blocks. And notice how I'm pushing this Illager Beast into the leave blocks and they're breaking. That means it doesn't make a choice. It doesn't use its AI. And I've tested this with Illager Beasts that have no AI as well. So they can break leave blocks, which is possibly a useful mechanism. Also, if we kill the Illager Beast, we will see that it drops a saddle. It always drops one saddle every single time it is killed. Now, when it comes to the Pillager, it will drop drop emeralds and those emeralds can be affected by looting. I've got a looting 999 sword here and as you can see um, it gave me a lot more emeralds and even more that time but if we kill it without looting it just drops one. The new flower, the Lily of the Valley, can be found in a forest biome and a flower forest biome as well. And that was it. I really didn't miss a lot from that update. One of the things that was listed in the technical update that a lot of players would have seen is a change to the loading screen. You can see here it now gives you some information about what it's doing. It doesn't go into specifics, but that's an obvious change most players would have noticed. And also if you've pressed escape in the game, there are some other things here that were listed under the technical changes as well. So there's now a give feedback button right here and also report bugs. However, I've noticed the link here is specific to snapshots, so I don't know if we're only going to see these buttons during the snapshots, and then they'll disappear when the full release is out, but they're there for now. Anyways, we have a lot to cover in this video, and there have been two new commands added, so we're going to start there. The first of which I'm going to cover is the simplest. It is schedule, and this allows you to schedule a function to run in the future, and possibly, maybe, if we look at that little option right there, other things in the future. But for now, you can schedule functions. And I've made one called Say Hello. And I'm going to get it so it runs in 20 ticks from now. And notice how there's this little appendage for D, S, and T. We'll cover that in just a second. We're going to let it run in 20 ticks from now, which is a second. And there you go. It says Hello. So that's quite useful for a lot of reasons that should be pretty obvious. And one thing to mention about it, if we schedule this to run for, let's say, 2,000 ticks, and then I run another schedule for 20. It will run the one for 20, but now it would have blocked off the one for 2000. So you can only have one thing scheduled at a time. So the D, S, and T change that you just saw on the previous command is from the time command. If we were to go and set the time, we can type in one of these or a numeric value. And now this numeric value can represent more than just ticks, which is what it used to do before. So 6000 would always be. Um, the middle of the day and I put the F3 screen on because if you look at where it says local difficulty it tells you the day at the end of that so we can actually set it to 6,000 days and you can see we are now on day 6,000 or we can go for seconds and I'm not sure where exactly that puts us somewhere in day 5. So yes D is days, S is seconds and T is ticks. So the other new command is slash drop. This one is a little tricky to describe but think of the event in which an entity or an item is brought into the world, like when you break a block or you kill a creeper and it drops gunpowder, uh, that is going to be simulated through this slash drop command. So you have a target and then a source. So you can target a place in the world, you can put site directly into the player's inventory or into an entity or even inside of a block like a chest. And then you have sources. Um, these can come from advancements, the fishing loot tables, loot tables themselves, the killing of an entity or the mining of a block. So if we just go into this world here, I can first of all simulate an entity uh, being killed using the drop command. So if we have a look here, we're specifying a specific location in the world, which is that diamond block, and we're saying we're going to kill the creeper, and it will drop its loot right there without there actually being a creeper. Now, I don't know the particular uses for this, but it is certainly interesting, and I'm sure map makers are going to have fun with it. Now, the next one I really like, this time what we're going to do is we are going to mine the block below us in the world. So again, we're using the relative coordinates to where we are, and then we're looking one block below ourselves to mine the block with our main hand. So because we're standing above grass, we get dirt. If I stand above sand, 
we would get sand. Um, but if I stand here and hold silk touch pickaxe in my main hand, then we would actually get grass instead of dirt because it is taking into account that I'm holding silk touch. It's a peculiar command, but I'm sure people are going to find a use for it. The data command has a new parameter, which is modify. This allows you to target a block or an entity and then take some of the information from it and you know manipulate that in whatever way you like. As an example, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the contents of this chest over into this one. So if I look at this chest and start off the command, we're going to uh, modify its data. We're going to select block. We've got the coordinates right there. And then we're going to type items and we're going to set the items from, if I could spell it correctly, uh, the block over on the right hand side. So now we've got to go and look at that block, type in the coordinates and then type items and bam, it will copy it across. So we've got those in there and now we have them in this chest as well. For a more practical use, we can combine this with another new feature, which is the ability to target specific slots of an inventory. As you can see right here, we are targeting the very first slot and we are looking for the display name of that item. And what we're going to do is then take that data and put it to the second slot and put it into the display law, which is some purple text that can appear under an item. So if we put that sword right there and rename this item to cake, there we go, <laughs> and put that in the first slot, this command will transfer that name into this sword. Check it out. So bam, there we go. And when we look at the sword, it has cake on the law line. And now, my friends, we're going to get into the really epic and interesting side of this update. So inside of this command block, there is this custom model data. That's a new feature and it allows you to basically give a custom texture to an item, right? So I'm going to go over to this dropper. I'm going to put in a stone sword. Then we're going to run this command. It's going to set the value to two. We have two different textures we can apply to it thanks to the resource pack we're using. And then when I open this, we have the legendary, the one and only, the mini Asuma sword. That's right. A miniature me holding a sword, that is ridiculous. And this is not one of those unbreakable hacky type swords. This will actually be just like a regular stone sword and its durability will run down. Now I know you're itching to see what that other texture is. Let's go ahead and uh, grab this out of here. It is the redstone hammer. It looks so mighty and powerful and full of redstone. Ah, oh, it's, just, it's just wonderful. Things are about to get a whole lot more epic now because of loot tables. Let's read the first line of this. Block drops are now controlled by loot tables stored in loot tables slash blocks. If you remember a previous update, they migrated entity drops to this, so you could change the drops of a creeper. It's now possible with blocks. And then there are a lot of new functions and expanded features for how the loot tables work here. And there are a couple that we're going to focus on, like match tool and tool enchantment, because these have really interesting behaviors in the world. So let's go back to the world where all those lucky blocks were. And these lucky blocks, by the way, are actually just sponges that have been retextured. And what we're going to do is go and break one. And I think it drops rotted flesh. Yes. So it drops rotted flesh because we have changed the loot table, right? It doesn't drop a sponge anymore, even though that's what it was. And so I have a bunch of different tools in my inventory. What happens when we break one of these with a diamond block? We get a golden apple. <laughs> you can see where this is going, right? So it's able to look at the type of tool that you're using and run like a different uh, drop or it could even do like a pool of drops. It could give you multiple items. It can do all of that sort of stuff. Hey, we just got an elytra and uh, look at that, a compass. Now, it also is able to match enchantments. So over here, we've got fortune. In fact, we've got two of these. Let's use this one and see what we get with fortune. We get a gold block. Now, I've also got fortune free and with this, we get a diamond block. So it can even like tell the level of enchantment that you've got. And it can differentiate the enchantments as well. So when we use Silk Touch on this, we get ourselves a Never Star. And unfortunately, it wasn't prepared for this video. But those loot tables can even detect if you're using a custom model on the item. So that means I could break something with the Redstone Hammer or the Mini Asuma Sword and get another item still. And the loot tables has a lot of information here. I understand bits and bobs of it in patches, but there's no point me waffling on about all of these changes. Some of them are quite complicated and I'll probably uh, explain them incorrectly. But down here you can see there is a big article explaining what all of these things do. Also in this article it says that item frame contents can now be modified with slash 
replace item. So we've got some item frames in front of us and that is the command we need to target all of these item frames. Then when it comes to the options for the inventory, container zero is the slot that you want um, for the item frame itself and then you can choose whatever you want. So let's go ahead and we'll put in the never star, bam, and all of those now have never stars. Chat components, we have this MBT chat component. It allows you to target a block or an entity and take information from it and turn it into text. So for this little test setup, we've got a magic block right here. When I put a sign above this and I put text into it, let's type hello world, I can use a command to take that text and turn it into chat elsewhere. So in this case, we use the tell raw command to say, and then this thing right here is targeting that block and interpreting the text. So now when I press enter, what is written on the sign now appears in chat. And if I go ahead and remove it, we get nothing. The execute command has a new parameter, which is if data. This allows you to basically query a block or an entity and get a response based on if that is correct or not. So what we're going to do is look at a villager. You see we're using the if data over here for the execute command. And uh, we're going to see if it has an inventory. And if it does, it's going to say the villager has an inventory. So there is a villager in the world, it's going to find it and it says the villager has an inventory. Now a mob that doesn't have an inventory is the creeper, so we're going to run the same command except we're going to target the creeper and it's going to say impossible if the creeper has an inventory. But of course nothing happens because the creeper doesn't. And last of all, advancements have received a couple of updates. Predicates will now support tags which are lists of other predicates. And uh, one of those that have been added is Is Lightning, a new source of damage that can be detected through advancements. So if I strike myself with lightning, you can see that we get <laughs> an advancement. And that brings us to the end of this video. I didn't get to cover every single detail of the technical changes, but I think we covered the most of them. And if you enjoyed the video or found it useful, then leave a like. It helps support the channel. And as always, thank you for supporting the channel. It is appreciated. And a big thank you to Mspace Dev and Plagiatus as well for putting together some data packs for use in this video and, of course, explaining things to me because I couldn't think of this stuff out by myself, right? Anyway, that's it for me this video. I'll see you soon with another one. Bye-bye.